Hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here. Now, whenever we last left off, Midoriya, he had just been hired on by the Yayorozu family. And, well, the reason why he was hired was to be at least a personal bodyguard. And or, possibly even a hitman. Midoriya's odd combination of skills, along with what he is, leads Momo to believe that he might be something different. He might be a special breed of ghoul. And she does want to see his abilities in action. The other thing was, he brews one hell of a nice cup of coffee. And she really does appreciate it. It does spice up things in her life. Adding a bit more variety. Now, it has been two weeks since that day. And Midoriya got fitted for his outfit. It's actually quite easy to use, along with actually maneuver in. He uses it ma mainly as just under her clothes. He wears these underneath his regular shirt and underneath his regular pants. In fact, after he gets done with the shift in Teku, he can go out and hunt down the man he needs to go after. Get his information, find out where he is, find out where everything is going down. That is what has been going on for the last two weeks. And Midoriya is at least beginning to think. As he is running along the rooftops, before taking a large jump and clearing the building. Laying on it as he does begin to start running again. Trying to figure all this out. What happens once they find this man? Jason, I believe his name was called. A ghoul. A cannibal. So what? I'm getting paid to kill this guy. So. I wonder what he's like anyways. Then again it is odd. It feels different meaning more ghouls. Then again, that weird guy, and a psychotic, well, rich girl. Ah, just my luck. Why do I always attract the weird ones? Midoriya thinks, as he does stop, meaning to listen in on the conversation. The last man he got information from, he at least cooperated with him, and tonight he is supposed to at least make an appearance. He'll see Jason, then find out more. If Jason's going to pop up somewhere else, then he can get everyone else together, and they can then ambush him. The rich girl wanted to test her skills, so she also does want to see my abilities firsthand. As Midori does listen in, hearing about what's going on, they are going to be meeting again, and he wants more supply. They've been getting less and less food. Well, obviously. The reason why you're getting is because we're starting to run out of humans in this part of the city. Why do you think we keep coming to you? You are our biggest buyers. We're giving you every ounce of stock we can find. I doubt that. Listen to me. You want to keep the suits fed or stay under our protection, you gotta supply us. Otherwise, they might start looking at you funny. You don't want the man who's protecting you to suddenly get hungry. And lose a bit of control. Worst thing for a ghoul is to go hungry. Besides... You don't want that now, do you? Jason intimidating the man. As he does actually back away. Saying, yes, um, well, I, I suppose I can at least trim a bit off the top. It, it's, it's free of charge. 
handing over at least a couple body bags. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does actually walk away, before sliding down the side of the building and jumping back and forth, and landing, before making a phone call, saying that he knows where Jason is going to be next, and that if she does want to test herself out, then meet me at this location. Good. Well, then I believe that you should, as Midoriya hangs up the phone, not wanting to listen to her. If he lets her talk, she'll start getting into his head. That's her thing. He's figured that out already. Don't let it distract you. Now. With that, Midoriya leaves. And he does head home. As he goes to school the next morning. However, he is a bit... <sighs> tired. So. He does at least look a bit odd at in class, since he's basically sleeping on his desk. Now, with that, Bakugo turns around, slamming his hand down with a loud explosion, basically making Midoriya jolt upwards, before at least, well, almost throwing out his hands. He does bring his hand up though, which kind of surprised everyone. They thought Midoriya was about to punch out Baku's teeth. Since Midoriya did bring his hand up, he, his face did look a bit angry. Along with surprised. Like you just startled an animal. Is he okay? Baku just asked him if he's doing fine. Or if that ritual's got him doing all this other fancy crap. Yeah, my bad, man. It's weird. Then again, I do get decent money for it. She's... fairly complicated, though. I'm not sure why I was supposed to be her bodyguard. Dude. You're durable enough to survive explosions. And you can heal. You're wondering that now? Or why you haven't taken the job sooner? I think it's actually pretty cool, though. Being around all that fancy crap. It's actually kind of interesting. Sort of like a fairy tale. Okay, dude, that's kind of weird. Since when have you been into fairy tales? Uh, well, I mean... Shit, I've kind of always figured that they were at least interesting. I get very bored, so I look at different things. Besides, can you really blame me? Not really. I do, well, used to work at a coffee shop. So I've at least had customers talk about their own interest. Hey, you too. As a teacher, somewhat, interrupts them, saying that he was teaching a lesson. Besides, cork usage is not allowed in school. Now, I will get back to it. Now, later on into the day at lunch, Midoriya does eat. And let's begin to think. Jason, Jason. Hmm. Jason, Jason. I wonder. This is going to be interesting. Are we just going to fight solo? Actually, that would be pretty interesting, by the way. Now that I'm thinking about it, my heart was racing and my blood was pumping. Along with that, I felt stronger. Why did I feel stronger? Was it... Was that the first time I went all out? No, I felt like I was, I was still in control. Not like whenever me and Yoshimura fight, I get... more... savage. Huh. Interesting. I wonder now. If she's gonna be there, should I bring Mom along? Eh, probably. Better to have backup and not need it than to need it and not have it. As Midoriya does look outside, staring in that way for quite a bit of time, before lunch does end, 
and around the end of the day, Midori begins to walk out of school. Bakugo not too far behind him. As he's running to the gates, to watch as a limousine pulls up. The window gets rolled down, and Midori begins to talk with the person inside. Before opening the door, and getting into the back. Leaving. Kinda confused. Since he was at the gate and saw the woman inside as soon as Midori left. Now, that does at least make sense though. The guy works in a manner, but he never expected that a limousine would come and actually pick him up. Jeez, she must really like that coffee then. Now, meanwhile, inside, Yayorozu is beginning to talk. Explaining to him exactly the information they got, the people they have, how many of them, along with more and more things. However, she does open up with one thing whenever Midori did sat down. Well, interesting. So this is where you go to school. Yeah. It's not much, but hey, I like the place. Some of the humans here are at least decent. Humans. Hmm. You stuttered for a second. Were you going to say people? Well, yeah, actually. Why? Well, I'm just curious. Was that your friend I saw? Yes, it was. That's my best friend, Bakuyo Kotsky. He's a really good guy. In fact, me and him do train a lot. And, well... I do have to hold back during a battle, since if I went all out, I'd probably kill him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your friend? He is your friend? Yeah? Why? Do you not have any of those? Tch. Hey, I'll have you know that I have plenty of friends. Inside the manor, or outside? Yeah, Yorozu, staring silence. Before Midori does ask her exactly, what are they going to do now? Then giving the explanation. As at the manor, everyone is getting prepared. And Midoriya does get a mask that someone does hand over to him. Saying that they're going to want to put this on. Since if Jason sees their face, things might not be pretty in the end. Midori is disregarding it as he does walk over and talk with his mom. Enko putting on her mask before at least pulling another one out of her back, handing it over to Midoriya. A lot of people do look at, well, unease. They do look at her mask, the way it looks and the way it's, well, sitting on her face. Many people have described a ghoul just like her. Many people said that she was... Dangerous. Hell. She was straight before she disappeared. In fact, well, there's not even very many pictures, let alone things to talk about that ghoul. And this blonde woman, she has a mask almost like hers. It's eerie how similar they are. Now, Inko does at least look up, looking to see these young ghouls walking over and asking them if they are ready, and that if they are going to be on their mission to kill this man. A lot of them shaking their heads yes, along with her seeing Miss Yayorozu, the woman who has employed her son. Now, they begin to leave, all of them packing into a van, leaving, eventually arriving in an alleyway, before they all do begin to scatter. Scatter like, well, paper in the wind. Beginning to just split up into different places. All, a lot of people taking points around the warehouse. And at least getting ready in case something does happen. Well, Momo, Midoriya, and Inko, and a few other ghouls are at least standing on top of the building. Looking down in through the skyline. Now. This place is quite simply a hotel. 
In fact, that's at least a cover for it. It might be a white suit's lair. A place Jason rests his head. Or at least some of his guys might. So, this is going to be the big problem here. There's going to be suits here, and they need to be ready in case they go wrong. As Midoriya does actually screw on the piece covering his eye. And then go on sitting that he's ready. Now, with that, they all do begin to make their way in. Midoriya turning on his abilities, and everyone smashing to the skyline. Midoriya directly flying in, before he throws his hand straight through another ghoul's chest, bringing his hand up towards his eyes, immediately stabbing them inwards, and then bringing his fingers downwards, and then tearing down, pulling out a good portion of the man's front face. Before Midoriya does turn, and his kagune begins to, well, fly in every different direction trying to attack multiple men. As Inko herself kills quite a few. And Momo is somewhat just standing there, watching. And trying to at least point this out. She's just standing there, with her hands crossed and the mask on. In fact, she's not really doing anything. So, this is getting annoying as her people begin to attack multiple ghouls. And they try to make their way throughout the facility. Now, with that being said, while they're making their way through this place, another thing begins to happen. It is at least surprising, or not at all, but the white suits. A sloppy gang of ghouls who deal with humans. So, the humans do at least have information that they gave to the doves. Anonymously, of course. Since if you're caught helping a ghoul, you get sentenced to death. A crime punishable by it. Now, everyone is making their way through and the doves do begin their operation. They heard gunfire, along with at least multiple things happening. Destruction of property and quite a lot of noise complaints. To be called in soon, obviously. Now, the white suits begin their, well, not legal, search of the area, since they didn't have time to get a proper warrant. But suspicion of ghoul is easy enough to write off. Now, they're doing that while everyone else is making their way through the building and trying to find Jason. Midoriya actually stabbing through and using his hands to fight off a bunch of ghouls. He's more or less used to hand to hand combat training. He's only used to dodging the Kagune, not having to fight with his own along with the way he needs to move his body in the air. As they do come up to a locked door. And everyone does these look at each other. Midoriya stepping forwards, before ripping the door off its hinges, and then turning it to his side, running forwards. Multiple people begin to fire off guns into it, before Midoriya smashes his hand into it and sends it flying forwards smashing into quite a lot of the men as he jumps over the door. And he begins to tear apart a lot of them. Actually going a bit psychotic, and having his fun. As those lines begin to appear around his eye once more. You cannot see them under his mask, but you can clearly tell something is happening to him. Something is affecting him. As Midoriya viciously slaughters these men, all of these white suits, as every ghoul there just watches. Watching as whenever Midoriya stops, he just drops a man. He was holding onto his, the collar of his suit, which is now heavily coated in red. Letting go of it, he drops to the floor. 
before he does turn his head and look at everyone. Them seeing Midoriya, they're just panting, along with actually at least a smile on his face, one they can't see. The mask is covering it. However, they can tell Midoriya enjoyed that. He enjoyed it thoroughly. So, as Momo begins to think, a rare breed indeed. Now, let's see how you face off against the cannibal. As they begin to make their way further, the CCG is making their way up the building, while they're making their way down. Eventually, the two groups colliding. As Midori and Inko do one thing. As soon as they do hear that they're going to be encountering CCG, Inko immediately does, jumps on Midoriya's back and uses her cognate to wrap around him as they do form the Three-Eyed Ghoul. Quite a lot of people interested in that. So it's not just one person, it's two. However, why are there three eyes? Quest questions for later, that's not important right now. Now, with that being said, they would eventually, well, Momo's people would hold off the white suits. Well, Midoriya grabs directly onto Momo and throws itself over the staircase. All of them beginning to fall as Midoriya does look upwards, cocking his hand backwards and smashing it forwards as hard as he can, directly into the ground. As they do arrive at the ground level, basement floor. Now, with that being said, everyone does get back up. Midoriya is beginning to look around. As he has run down a corridor, immediately on his toes, Inko chasing after him, realizing something is wrong, something is very, very wrong. Before they do encounter a giant open room, and Midori does walk in, interrupting Jason's playtime with one of his toys. As Jason does see Midoriya, Midoriya just walking forwards and staring at the man, not really even saying a word. The man asking this kid if he's lost, or is he? does he want to join the white suits? <laughs> Wait a minute. Your smell, it's similar. Familiar, even. So, you're not here to join us. You're some brat connected to that chick, aren't you? You're connected to her. Binge, aren't you? You smell just like her. Only... Different, somehow. I can't pin it. Similar. Huh. Well, let's hope you taste the same. As Jason runs forward beginning to try and fight with Midoriya. Midoriya just brings his hands up, along with his Kagane popping out of his back once again. Immediately jetting forward, trying to stab Jason directly into the gut, as he basically just smacks his Kagane downwards and jumps over it, beginning to pull on it and rip this one apart. Midoriya is sending more of his tendrils out flying. As Jason Airborne uses his Kagane to block this attack. And the two begin to fight. As Midoriya goes on the defensive. Him basically just running around trying to dodge Jason. And trying to get a feel for his fighting style. The guy has no combat experience. Not hand to hand. That he sees. He's a brawler, that's it. And well... He's doing something odd with his Kagane. He's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, that's just it. Whenever he reaches a size like that, he's going to be getting slower, right? Midoriya, at least, thinking that that's how it's going to work. As Jason does rush him, using his hand and smacking him directly away, 
Midori being sent flying as he smashes into a wall and Jason runs forwards, directly flying into Midori and stabbing into him. Thinking that his impaling him through the chest, well, it would at least distract him enough. Stabbing him directly underneath his ribcage. Directly underneath his heart, if you would. And begins to try and rant to this brat, instructing him that he's going to find Binge. And when he finds her, he wants her to know what he did to him. As he does bring his hand up, and begin to try and rip away the mask on Midoriya's face. As soon as he does grab it, Midoriya does look directly at him, smashing his head forwards and tearing his nose off. Midoriya, then, hearing Jason scream, before he just does throw his hand backwards, smashing it directly into the wall. And Jason does go back words, letting go of Midori as he does fall into the ground. Midori does see that Jason tastes foul, a taste he has never tasted before. It's bad. Then again, as he does get back up and grab onto his mask, opening the zipper and just saying that that taste is different and he wants to try it again. As he does rush forwards, Jason just thinking, this one's already a broken toy, something that he doesn't even have to try anything on. Is that it? What is wrong with this kid? As he goes to throw his hand outwards, Midoriya directly sliding to his left, the hand cutting directly along his stomach. Midori using his kagune and grabbing it, stabbing downwards in Jason's arm as he just begins to munch into it, biting at it as Jason just brings his hand up, smashing it into the ground over and over and over again. Now, that would be where Inko does intervene. Whatever is wrong, well, it's different. This is the longest Midori has ever used his kagune, and some side effects are beginning to show. So he doesn't have this problem ever. She's never had it. So why is he? What's going on with her son? Now, with that being said, she does basically grab onto Jason's back and grab her hand into a... well, grab a handful of meat and then just begin to try and tear it out. Tearing away at the muscle on Jason's back since it's so heavily armored along the beginning to try and stab into him with her own kagune, before Jason just runs backwards, smashing into a wall, turning around and beginning to throw punches directly at Binge, before Midoriya does actually get back up. And well, his mask is no longer on his face. It fell off, revealing what was underneath. Midoriya is a rare breed, a very rare breed indeed, as he just rushes forwards at un the unbehold speeds, rushing straight for Jason, smashing and directing to the back as he punches his hand straight through his chest. Now, Inko does see Midoriya's hand, as he turns his wrist and directly grabs onto something, before ripping his hand backwards and Jason dropping to the ground, somewhat screaming and in pain. Midoriya just latching onto his back and beginning to try and tear into his neck, tear right into around the nape area, before Jason throws out his kagune, and it stabs directly straight through Midoriya's chest, and a part of his guts. Midoriya not even really flinching or reacting at that moment, as while he's gnawing into Jason, Something comes out of his own back. Something... Now, Midoriya... Well, it's a bit odd. Momo just watching this is in complete awe. He has a set of wings. Marvelous. Beautiful, even. Inko just watching. Before her attention does go back to Jason. 
who has a hand thoroughly placed into her guts. And Midoriya, he looks up to see his mom, his face dripping with blood, along with this strange mask directly on top of it, before he does at least snap back to his senses for a second. And his face goes from a sadistic smile to somewhat of a stable face. His smile fading. Before he just, just stares at her. Jason taking the opportunity, cocking back his left hand and directly bringing it up. As Midoriya, his Kaokune, reacts, directly smashing out forwards and stabbing into the back of Jason's neck, straight through his neck. Jason just at least stopping at that, and Ko snapping her hand forwards and stabbing directly into Jason's eyes, and just reaching deeper. As she kills him, she delivers a final blow as Jason gets pulled off of her. Now, after that, Inko does at least have a gut wound. It will heal. Then again, it's gonna... well, she's gonna need something to eat. As you do have Midoriya, who just standing there. The multiple Kagune or multiple RC sack ghoul. He has two sacks. That's not really common for ghouls. It's not really, is it? It's different. It's beautiful. Before Momo does just at least walk forwards, clapping her hands, saying that it was a marvelous display. However, they do need to leave now. That being whenever CCG does at least begin to make their way in. And Midoriya, he just takes his attention to them. As soon as they do run into the room, Midoriya flies forwards and begins to try and fight. As he clashes with a couple members of them. Them just watching Midoriya with these wings. Coming in for light and fast strikes. Midoriya at blinding speeds. Some of them are barely able to react, and Midoriya took one out almost instantly. He ran by one and immediately jabbed his hand upwards straight into their chest, and pulling their heart out, along with at least one of their lungs. It was not a pretty sight to behold. Especially since you really don't want to see one of your friends get turned into a fucking lunchable by one of these things. Now, with that, Inko grabs his mask, along with at least Momo, who's still watching. As one of the men do run towards her, she herself uses her own ability. As she at least does create her own, well, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the one directly in the back of your neck. I want to say it's the same one as Skiyama. But at the same time, I see her being a Kakujo too. Light and fast strikes. That kind of does remind me of her style. Let's say she does have a Kakujo. As soon as she does at least manifest hers, she immediately takes a couple steps backwards. The man for the CCG getting on the defensive. If the other ghoul is fast, then this one is probably just, as, just so. Besides, they need to leave now. The man taking his eyes off of her for a second, looking over to see if the other ghoul is dead, before Inko does come in and directly smash her hand upwards, directly into the man's chin, breaking his skull, or at least fracturing it, along with at least breaking a few of his teeth. As she does grab him by the throat and smash him directly into the ground, before tearing it off. Now, as soon as she does run over, she does basically grab Midoriya. She ran by, and at least got his attention, holding up his mask. Midoriya concerned for a second, that one rational thought going through his mind. His identity. Is his identity safe? Bringing his hands up to his face, and feeling this strange thing, before at least turning and running that direction. 
His Kagunai stabbing directly upwards behind them into the ceiling, as Midoriya just begins to run along with them. Now, the men do at least try to give chase, however Midoriya is collapsing them into this room. And, surprise surprise, it worked. Now, with that being said, this is whenever they would start moving up through the staircases. Finding some of Momo's people, yeah, only one of them is alive, the other three are dead. As they do at least pick up the bodies, and begin to run. They need to get out of here, if they can find these bodies and connect them to their civilian identities, that means that they're going to trace them back to the Ayurozus. As whenever they do at least leave, Inko does one single thing. This is a very nice hotel. Sadly, it's run by assholes. So, as she does at least look around, finding a piece of cloth and lighting a candle. Now, as soon as she does that, she basically just tosses the cloth in a very dry area, and the place goes up in flames. Her being the last one out, as the men underground are going to be trapped there for quite a while. And they do at least retreat. As soon as they do get back to the manor though, Midoriya is beginning to at least feel different. And act different. He's going through the effects of cannibalism. Cannibalizing another ghoul. What he did doesn't happen as fast. He seems to be manifesting a Kakuja. But even then, that only happens through cannibalism or a rare occurrence. And her baby's difference. Are half goals really this strong and dangerous? Jeez. Well now, that's very interesting then. Along with Momo. She has seen enough. And well. Sadly, she didn't join in on the fight. She knew that the man was far, far out of her league as soon as he began using Akakuja. A part of one at least. Then again, that was the most unexpected turn of events. The One-Eyed King. Perhaps he lives. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that will be a good point to do this off of. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.